There is a chemical in your brain that looks just like delta-9 THC from marijuana, and it is called anandamide. Anandamide is the natural THC of the human brain. THC fits into receptors called CB1 receptors that are intended for your brain's natural anandamide. If I use this every single day, my brain can make less anandamide and definitely can make less receptor sites. This is how most psychoactive drugs work. Most psychoactive drugs look like chemicals that already exist inside the human brain. So here is a cannabinoid 1, a CB1 receptor. It's sticking out of a cell wall. It's waiting for anandamide to plug into the receptor and activate the receptor. But I can start using THC instead, and it will activate the receptors. Three studies have shown that the chronic administration of THC can lead to decreased production of anandamide in different parts of the brain. And research on this is sort of mixed. But over 30 studies have shown chronic administration of THC can lead to down-regulation of receptors. Down-regulation of receptors is where receptors become overactivated, overstimulated, and they just grow shut. The receptors slide down into the cytoplasm of the cell. They make themselves unavailable because they're being overstimulated. When a large number of receptors grow shut, downregulate, this causes the condition known as tolerance, the need to use more to get the same effect. So as receptors downregulate, then it doesn't matter. I'm smoking and I'm smoking more marijuana and more marijuana, but I'm not getting the high that I originally got when I first started using. So we know from studies on humans and animals that downregulation of receptors happens more quickly in adolescence. And we also know on studies on tobacco that when adolescents quit smoking tobacco, that the brain doesn't heal, it doesn't change back as quickly as it does in adults. There isn't a change in those receptors. So in a way, it looks like from the research that it's actually harder for kids to quit smoking tobacco than it is for adults. We often think of older adults who are smoking, like, my goodness, they've been smoking for 40 years. That's going to be really hard for them to quit. But in fact, it may actually be harder for adolescents to quit based on measurable withdrawal symptoms.